Hi everybody, Brooke here. So today I want to talk about certain techniques that I use to ground myself. So back when my symptoms of mental illness were really, really bad, I would go into full-blown panic attacks. I mean, I would be triggered by something and I would spiral out and freak out. And a lot of the time I'd actually feel like I was coming outside of my body and I had no idea how to get back into it and ground myself. So. Today, I want to share my techniques that I use on a daily basis to get myself back into my body. My symptoms now are so much better, and to be honest, for most days, they're non-existent. And I've been able to do that by therapy. Um, I went through a residential treatment that focused on a really awesome therapy called DBT, Dialectical Behavioral Therapy, and my spirituality has blossomed. And I've also just been able to create awesome little techniques and tricks and tips that have helped me to deal with any triggers as they come up. So my triggers now, they don't feel as strong as they used to, but it's because I've gone through all of these processes of dealing with them and figuring out where they come from and validating my feelings. And by doing that, I've been capable of really dampening them so they aren't as intense as they used to be. With that said, that doesn't mean that I'm not triggered. And in those moments of being triggered, I have found ways to get back into my body much quicker than I used to be able to. So in the past, sometimes those moments after I got triggered, they could last anywhere between 30 minutes to three days. There were times where I was in full-blown panic mode for way too long, to the point where I was getting sick, I was in bed all the time, I would drink a lot, and now I'm more capable of dealing with them as they come up. Sure, I still slip up from time to time. I still have days where I'm just not 100% there, but I also deal with them myself, whereas I used to project onto other people and ruin my relationships. Now I kind of just settle back into myself and find ways to work through these processes on my own. So the first thing I want to share with you is my emergency skill. So this is a skill I used when I was full-blown panicking. When my chest was tight, when I'm looking around and I'm freaking out and I'm calling people 10,000 times and I'm uh, driving recklessly and I'm getting wasted. Like during those moments, you just need something to like snap you right back into reality. So this skill is something I learned in DBT actually, and it works every single time. At least it did for me. So what you're going to do when you are in full blown panic mode is you are going to take an ice pack, a bag of peas, a frozen steak, wrapped of course, not out in the open like they do in movies, and place it right on your eyes right here. This area around your eyes is super sensitive to temperature. So you know how like in movies they splash cold water on their face? Well, it's just like that. It actually does work. By doing that, you just shock your body and you come right back into center. I carried an ice pack, like one of those ice packs that you break apart and it gets cold. I carried that in my purse. I still have one actually in my car. So I had one in my locker at work. So if I had any moments of freaking out like that, I could go downstairs really quickly, put that on my eyes and snap myself back to reality. Give it a shot, and especially if you live in New England, it is literally snowing right now. Throw some snow on your face, jump into the snow. I know it sounds ridiculous, but when you're panicking, like you're gonna do ridiculous things anyway. Might as well do something that might be able to help, right? So the second thing I do, or another thing I do to help myself get grounded, is I post affirmations around my house. So on my mirror in my bathroom, I have one on the left side that says, Good morning, beautiful. You're amazing, and today is going to be awesome. And right on the bottom, it says something like, Just remember, stay in the present moment. There's nothing else but the present moment. And on the other side, it says, like, Good night, sexy lady. I hope you had an amazing day, or something along those lines. But I try to post things around, so if I'm, you know, stomping around and in whatever mood, I remember them because I see them. They're literally right there in front of my face. Another thing I do, I have this self-love box. So when I was in residential treatment, myself and two of my besties in there decided we were going to have a little arts and craftsy day. So we went and we got these little heart boxes and we put affirmations inside. So when you have a bad day, you can just go in and pull one out and read it. So let's see. This one. Uh, let's find a good one. For instance, this one says, never lose the intimacy you have with yourself. You're at your very best when this exchange is consistently present. So whenever you're solid in yourself, like I mentioned earlier, getting back into my body, not projecting onto others, but nurturing that relationship with myself and handling my emotions on my own, that's something that when you nurture that, all is good. 
And so this is something that I have. It's super cute. It says affirmations on it. On the front it says, I am loved. And it just helps. It's something cute and simple. You can gift these to people and you guys can have like a little party and write a bunch of affirmations inside. I love it. So another skill of mine is mindfulness. We all talk about mindfulness. It's huge in DBT and it's huge in the spiritual community in general. So there are a couple things I do to just get myself back in my body. The first thing that sounds silly is focusing on my feet. So when I'm walking and like I start having thoughts that are zoning me out and I'm like thinking and I'm not really paying attention, I'm not really in the present moment, I just focus on my feet. I'm like, wait, Brooke, get back into your body. Your head is going into weird places. Just focus on your feet. And you can focus on the way that they feel on the ground. You can focus on each step. You can count your steps. And that's just a way to get you back into the present moment. Another thing I do, knitting. So I love to knit because it's super tedious and you have to focus because if you don't, you can just like mess it up beyond repair. And I'm not really skilled because I know there's some way that you can like go back and fix it, but I could never do that, so then I would end up having to start over, and then you just get mad, and then you have to do all of these skills all over again, so mindfulness, pay attention to your knitting project. Sometimes I'll just go on a long drive and listen to music really, really loud. I'll roll down the window, well not right now because it's snowing, but in the sunny weather, or if I'm in California, I'll roll down the window and just enjoy the scenery and just drive. Sometimes I don't even go anywhere. Sometimes I just drive up to Vermont and drive on back down to the Berkshires. And it's so beautiful where I live and in New England. So if you live in a pretty place, just get out and drive because then you're focusing on the road, hopefully. And then you're also just focusing on the cool breeze on your face and it just brings you back into the moment. I also will pamper myself. So let's say I get triggered by something. Let's say it's a TV show where people are cheating on each other. That always triggers me. I don't like it. It makes me feel very uncomfortable. And I'll just be like, oh God, I just feel weird now. What if I get a boyfriend and he cheats on me? And you know, all this stuff just starts coming up because that's just how my brain is. I fear abandonment. That's just the reality. Sorry guys. So I pamper myself. Sometimes I'll get into the bath. I'll do a body scrub. I'll do a face scrub. I'll do a face mask. I'll do a hair mask. And not only does that make you feel good about yourself because you're beautifying and you're taking care of your body and your skin, but also all the smells and the warmth of the water and the bubbles and all of that stuff is just kind of this whole vibe that puts you in the moment because it smells good and it's just, it, it engages all of your senses. Eat a little chocolate, you know, drink a little hot tea in the bath. It all just engages every single one of your senses and it feels so good. Another thing I do, the last tip that I have is meditation. Yes, meditation is difficult. Um, and usually I'll get to meditation after I've done one or a couple of those initial grounding techniques. Now it's pretty easy for me to just move on from a trigger and sometimes I don't even have to use a technique. Sometimes it's something just like <sighs> deep breaths, which I guess is also a technique, which I should have added that, but I'm telling you now, so it's okay. And usually if I, I, if I take a couple deep breaths, then I can get back into my body and then I'll meditate. And I actually meditate twice a day normally, sometimes even more depending on how much time I have, depending on if it's kind of an introverted day, you know, when it's snowing and I work from home most of the time, aside from my mental health speaking. Meditation does not have to be long. It can be three minutes. It can be 45 minutes. Mine fluctuates between. Generally, I meditate for about 25 or 30 minutes a session, so usually about an hour a day. And my meditation is generally focusing on my breath. In and out, you know, hold for three seconds at the top. When you let out, completely relax your body. Another thing I've been doing a lot of lately are visual visualization meditations. I don't know why I can't say that word. So a lot of the ones I've been doing lately are visualization meditations. Oh my God, I said it. I've been doing those because I want to attract the things that I want into my life. So let's say I do freak out about that, you know, TV show where people are cheating on each other. I will visualize a happy relationship and I'll start to feel good and it'll actually feel good inside my body where it's not even that I need that relationship but I can just enjoy the feeling of having it and usually that's just because I realize that I have that within myself. So those are my little tips and tricks. So we've got a distress tolerance, so the emergency skill, putting the ice pack on your face, 
We have affirmations, writing them around your apartment, you know, posting some on your phone, um, writing them at the end of the day, your gratitudes and your, your affirmations, um, making a little affirmation box, a little self-love box, getting into, you know, a self-pampering, a self-loving mood, going on drives. Oh my gosh, I forgot to mention dancing. Dancing, I think that's an obvious one, you know, you can just get into your body and sometimes I do some really weird dance moves but it's more so just so I can connect to my body and the capacity that it has to move through space. And then I also do things like mindfulness and focusing on my feet, going on long drives, knitting, and then I meditate. Um, so those are my skills, those are the things I use on a daily basis sometimes to get back into my body, to ground myself, and to nurture and love and appreciate and have just a beautiful day because before it was very very difficult for me to have that and now I can pretty much say almost every single day is lovely but it takes work and consistency so there we are thank you so much for watching if you haven't already subscribed to my channel I would love that if you did and if you haven't shared on social media that would be amazing my whole goal after going through some of the darkest days of my life is to help others that's why I do mental health speaking and that's why I write these blog posts and do these videos because I want other people to feel good too and I know that so many of us out there whether we've been diagnosed with a mental illness or not we struggle from mood cycles to just feeling like, what the heck am I doing with my life? So all of my videos and blog posts are gonna aim at that, and they're also gonna aim at other ways like nutrition and eating well, and how that can also create just a better environment to heal some of the issues that we've got going up on up here and got going on in here. So subscribe if you haven't, share if you haven't, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!